Hi there, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast. It's been a while um, and I'm going to revisit a topic that I just brushed past in uh, episode number 44 uh, where I was looking at a part of my dot files and I said, you know, what this does is beyond the scope of this screencast. Um, and so now I'm going to show you what this thing does that I skimmed past the other time. Um, basically, uh, I have a, a set of directory hashes that I've set up in uh, my Zish configuration um, and some of the paths in here would be sensitive so I've just put like a toy example here of uh, some path in a open source repo that I work on um, but the basic idea of these is that you can tell Zish and you can also tell Bash to do something like this as well uh, but you can tell Zish to assign a key to a, a path and then you can use it when you're in the shell so here we have this G hash um, and I can basically list it and even though I'm nowhere near that directory it will uh, show me the contents of that directory um, and likewise I can cd to these places um, and you'll notice that in the prompt there it shows me the abbreviated, abbreviated version instead of the actual path. I um, also made a little helper which I can show you now I think it's under Zish functions uh, for jumping to these things oops jump even more easily so there's uh, the jump function there. Basically what that does is allows me to, let me go somewhere else. Um, I can then jump here, <laughs> jump to this place. Uh, and there I am again with just a J, slightly easier than typing tilde G. But the point about these G paths is you can use them anywhere in the, um, anywhere in the command line. So for example, I could do, show me the word count of the package JSON in this file um, and tab completion works and it's all just great. Uh, so I've got this method of jumping around uh, the file system because I have a number of these shortcuts set up. Um, I would like to be able to leverage that inside Vim as well. Um, so what I'm gonna show you is some configuration that I've got in place that enables me to do just that. Uh, uh, you'll notice I've got dollars G in there. I do dollars G and now I'm in the directory that I wanted to jump to. So how did I set that up? Uh, so we briefly saw this in the screencast on profiling optimization when we came across, I'm not in the right directory. Um, we came across some code that was slow. Um, and so it was somewhere around here. Uh, basically this variables init function was slow. So uh, I showed you in that screencast uh, how I basically defer it until Vim is idle. Um, but let's look at the meat of that function and what it actually does. Um, so that's going to be vim auto load. There it is. Uh, so we had a glimpse of this back in that screencast, but now I'm going to walk through it in a little more detail. Uh, basically, we're going to shell out um, and invoke a brand new shell. Um, we're going to make sure that this common private file where these directory hashes are defined exists. Um, the reason why it might not exist is um, if you clone my dot files, there'll be nothing there um, because the contents are sensitive. So they're committed to the Git repo uh, in, as an encrypted blob. Um, and only once I've decrypted them is this file there. Um, so I want this to behave gracefully, even in the absence of the decrypted plain text. So basically we make sure the file's there. If it is there, we source it. And then we ask Azish to print out the defined directory hashes, um, which you can see there on the, the right. Um, once we've got the list, we can basically split it do some Vim script shenanigans and define uh, dollars variables. So in other words, global environment variables that correspond uh, to the directory hashes. Um, I've got this if exist check there to make sure that I don't clobber any existing variable that might be defined. But with that, um, it is, as you can see, defined and, and there we are. Um, so at the moment, I'm not in that directory, but I can do things like search it quite easily. So for example, let's say I want to search for this um, case insensitively for uh, GraphQL, if I can just type this in that directory, um, I just do that and I've got all the results from that path without having to change directory to it. So uh, this is particularly useful, I find, uh, in the context where I work, where we have this huge mono repo with like a million files in it, because I can effectively create shortcuts to specific islands of code within this massive uh, world map of code that is the large repo. Um, and I can generally find things very quickly uh, using ferret, which is what I just showed you, um, in combination with one of these filters, um, rather than starting at the root of the directory and um, searching the entire thing, which would be slow. Uh, 
Um, so that's all I got for you uh, right now. Uh, I'm going to put some links to some of these dot files in and to ferret, I guess, in the show notes. And I will hopefully be back again soonish with another Vim screencast. I am going to be traveling a little bit, so I won't be quite as frequent as I was last year, but um, then I should try to get back to a normal rhythm again when I get back. So thanks for your patience.